Today we're going to be taking a look at this little Arduino circuit. It's an RTC clock or a real-time clock. We're going to be using a RTC module, a little Arduino Uno, a display here which is a Catalex display. It's a four-digit display that's driven just using two wires plus two wires for power, so four in total. Some of the equipment we're going to need is basically a soldering iron, you will need some trimmers or side cutters and you'll also need a selection of wires. So let's take care of the wiring first. What we're going to need to do is wire four wires to our RTC clock. These are then going to be wired into the positive or five volts of the Arduino. The black wire is going to go to ground and then we're going to wire into analog four and analog five of the Arduino. Taking a closer look at the RTC module, this one is labelled as a tiny RTC I2C modules. There are two chips on board, a little crystal oscillator. There's a bank of connections down this side. How many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm not going to use those. I'm going to use these five ports on this side. And the only ones I need are SCL, which is connected to the white wire, SDA, which is connected to the grey wire, VCC, which is to the red wire, and ground which is connected to the black wire. So on the Arduino end we're going to put the red wire into 5 volts. I'm going to use this one up there. I'm going to put the black wire into ground. I'm going to use this one. It doesn't matter which ones you use but that's where I've gone. And I'm going to be putting the SCL into analog 5. And I'm going to be putting the SDA into analog 4. It may be possible to change these pins, but they are the ones that are currently set up to work with the I2C port. Some other things to note about this RTC is the battery is a 2032. Now that battery provides power for the clock when there's no power going to the Arduino. That means that this shouldn't lose its time once it's been set. Typically out of the pack it won't be set, it will actually be disabled and you'll have to use the Arduino to send some code to it to switch it on and set the time. Some other things to note is these cheap modules can sometimes have flat batteries so I've had to replace the battery on this one. I've also experienced problems where these boards can put power down the VCC back to the board and that will actually drain this battery out and if that's something you experience these batteries going flat you may well need to put a diode in on your red power line to stop the power flowing back towards the UNO board. But that's not a problem with this board. And now a closer look at our display. This is a four digit display that's got four figure eight displays or they're actually called seven segment displays. We also have the two LEDs in the middle so we can flash in between like a digital clock typically does. This one is labeled as Catalex. There's a date on the back as well in case you want to know that. And it has just four connections which simplifies this circuit. We have a clock or CLK, we have a digital in out which is DIO, we have VCC and ground. We're now going to wire this one up. The first two are easy VCC to 5 volts and ground to ground. My display's VCC is on this white wire, so that can go to 5 volts. The ground is on this black wire, so that can go to ground. And the two leftover wires are clock, which is on purple, CLK. That's going to go to pin two. And the last one is the digital in and out, which is on my grey wire here. That's going to go to our Uno pin three. So that's all the connections done. Now we're going to have a look at the software on the computer and program it in, and we should be good to go. Right, let's take a closer look at this program. So what I've done is I've used the two example sketches that come with the rtclib.h library and the tm1637.h library. This second one is for the display and the first one is obviously for the real-time clock. So there's two examples in those libraries. I've merged them together and simplified them greatly so that we can just get this clock up and running as quickly as possible. So I've started off with some wiring notes. 
The first thing we're going to include is the library YH. You should have that one as default, but if you get any errors on that, you'll have to download it. That's going to be used for the two wire communication to the um, I2C devices. The next library we need to include is for the RTC clock, which is rtclib.h. Then we're going to declare which clock unit we're using, and that is in this case the RTC underscore DS1307. By putting this line in, we don't have to set the clock up and we don't have to do various other things that might differ on different RTC modules. The next thing we need to do is declare the library for the display. In this case, it's include tm1637.h. Then we're going to define the two pins that we're going to use for CLK and DIO, which are two and three. If you want to use other pins, you can change that here. The next thing to do is assign those to the particular clock that we're using for the library to use. Then what we do is we set up a variable that will actually be used to store the time data so that we can display it to the display. I've just set these to hex 0 x 0 0 for all four digits. Then what we're going to do is we're going to use a variable here called clock point and clock point is used to flash the double colon on and off. We're also going to set up a routine here or a variable for update. We're going to do another one for second, minutes and hours. Actually, I will not need seconds in this particular example, so we can take that one out. The next thing we'll need to do is set up our void setup. In here, we'll first of all set up the display by using these two lines of code tm1637.init and tm1637.set. We can set the brightness here, 7 being the brightest, 0 being the darkest. Then what we need to do is set up our clock. And we have a little routine here in the setup that does some pretty smart stuff. First of all, it's going to actually check to see if the RTC is connected. If it's not, it's going to display on your serial monitor RTC error. You'll need to set your serial monitor to 57,600 on the communication speed. And then the second part of the routine says, if the time is not set, we're actually going to set the time and we're going to grab this time off the computer or from the programming software. We're actually going to take the time and save it into the clock. Now, if the clock is already running, I believe these if statements mean that we'll skip setting the clock and it will just remain running. Um, if the clock time needs updating, I think we would have to do something different like reset the clock, take the battery out and then reprogram it. Void loop. What we're going to do now is actually get the time from the RTC module by using time date now equal RTC dot now. Then we're going to serial print the time in hour dash minutes to the serial monitor. If you don't want to do that, you can probably take all of this out. Then what we're going to do is adjust our variables hour and minute to the actual now hour and now minute that we've just collected from our RTC. Then I've got a delay in here of one second. May or may not need that, but I'm going to leave that in in this example. Then what we need to do is run this subroutine, which is time update. Time update is going to drop us down to here, which you can't see. Time update is going to drop us down a few lines into this subroutine, void time update. Just got to adjust this so we can see it on screen. First part of time update runs this little if statement here and it checks to see whether the point is currently on the two dots on the screen or they're currently off. And what this will enable us to do is actually flash those dots on and off. They kind of flip flop on and off. And then what we need to do is prepare our hour and minute variables to be displayed on the display segment 0, 1, 2 and 3. So 0, 1 are for the hours, 2 and 3 are for the minutes. And what we've got to do is convert our time into hours and minutes suitable for the display. And we do that first of all 
for the first digit is the number of hours, for example, 10 divided by 10. If it is 10, it will show you a one. The next line of code does the same for the single units of hours. And then we do the repeat for minutes. For example, on this line, if it was 33 minutes, it takes 33 divided by 10 gives us three. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully this has helped you get your real time clock working. If you have any problems, feel free to comment below. I'm sure someone who's watching this video can give you a hand or I can give you a shout out and get you working. Double check you've got the correct libraries installed. You can either download them using the Arduino library manager or you can normally find them in BitHub and places like that. Lastly, if you found this video helpful, please do click that subscribe button down there. Give me a thumbs up. Say hello in the comments. And that's all for now.